we all know that this image looks like garbage. Well, that's because it is garbage, but the contrast is all wrong. Let's fix it. I'm going to show you not one, not three, but two different methods of changing gamma slash contrast of images. The first one I'm going to show you is log transformation. This one is less powerful because it's less adjustable, but you can see the log curve there. It converts all of the lower values to brighter. I will be showing you two equations here. The first equation is the log transformation, so c is a constant value, which I'll explain, and then log is just the normal log function. r is the input pixel. You have to offset it by 1 because you can't put 0 into log, and then s is the result. Here is the second function, where c is equal to the max divided by log of the max plus 1. That's just so we make the data so it's between 255 and 0. This brings us to our second technique, power law transformation. Looking at the graph, you can see that a lower number brings up the brightness, and a higher number darkens the image. Here is the equation, s equals cr to the power of y. This is a different c value, it's 255 in our case. y is equal to 1 over the input gamma, so the number you insert is going to be the inverse. And now it's implementation time, so I'm going to show you log transformation. Okay, first things first is we're going to make our logarithmic transformation. So, if you haven't watched my last video, you should probably watch that. I'll have it linked and then have an icon here of what the thing looks like up in the eye. So we're going to do our post-processing. So we're going to make a new file in our post-processing. We're going to call this log transformation.rs. Then I'm just going to copy this text because we need to go into our post-processing and then mod log transformation. This just gives the main folder the information that this file exists. Inside of here, it's going to be the exact same template as our negative image in the last video. So first thing we're going to do in this file is get our image libraries. We're going to make a public function, call it adjust. So we're going to be adjusting our image. So we're going to be taking in a dynamic image and then outputting an RGBA image. We're going to let the, both the width and the height equals the image dimensions. We're going to let a mutable image equal a new image of the same size. So this is going to be our output. We're going to loop through the height and the width. We're going to take each pixel. We're going to set it to equal the in image pixel and then we're going to loop through each one of the colors in the pixel. We don't need to worry about alpha. So this is going to be the equation that we need to change. This outputs the pixel, so that converts it over. So for the logarithmic equation, we do need a c value, so it's going to be c times log of 1 plus r. So we need to calculate our c value c equals 255.0 divided by f64 dot dot log and this is going to be of 255 plus 1 and then the base is going to be 10.0 you can do log base 10 but you can also change the different logs this is just to showcase that we can do that now, of course, the compiler is just going to convert this into 256, but it's going to be your max divided by the log of the max. This just gets your distribution map. And uh, now we go into our pixel. We're going to do our constant times f64 dot dot log so we're going to do a log here we need to take our pixel color plus one 1 1.0 and we need to convert this to a f64 and we need to put in our base which is going to be base 10 and then now this is giving us an error. 
that means we need to convert this from a U30 or an F64 to a U38, so we're going to do as U8. Now this should be our entire log function, so if we go back to this image, and then we change this from negative to logarithmic transformation, and then we can run this here, so we're going to do it a cargo run. It's going to craft our image. So we pulled up our image here, so this is our not garbage image, and this is our garbage image. So you can see that it raised the contrast, pretty much just brightened the image. Now it is time to make our power law. Power law transform. And we need to make a folder for this, our new file, .rs. And we can hit save once more and this should refresh. This is going to be pretty much a copy of the log transform. So we're going to copy this, paste it in here. Pretty much everything applies. We're just going to remove our C function here. And then this is going to change. We still need to cast that as a U8. But if we go into here, we now need to import a new variable. So this is going to be our gamma colon. And this is going to be a F64. Once we're in here, we need to do our function. This is going to be 255.0 because we need a floating point number. Multiply by F64. And we need our pow function, pow f. We're going to take our pixel of i as a f64 divided by 255.0. And our gamma is going to be 1.0 divided by our gamma. So now this is our power log, or power law transformation. So if we go back to our original image, and then change this from log transformation to power law transformation, and then we need to add our gamma, so we're going to do a 0.67, should make the image darker. If we run this, pull up the two images, and we'll hope this one refreshes up again. Now we can see that the image is now darker, slightly. So now we can adjust this. And another thing to keep in mind is this current function will do a log for every single one of the pixels for every single one of the different colors, which if you have an 8K image, you're definitely going to see those results. So I'm going to show you how to speed these up. Uh, about double the speed. So if you've watched my dynamic programming video, you're going to know the technique I'm going to use here. Although this does not recursively call the memorization, we do need to make a memorization. So we're going to start with the power log, power log. So we're going to let immutable memo be an array of u8, so unsigned integer 8 bit of 256 is how many different possibilities we're going to store inside of this array. we got to set this to an array of zeros of 255, or 256, sorry about that. Once we have this set here, now we can go into our for loop. We need to check if it is in our memory. So if memo of picks of i as a u size is equal to zero. You can open that up. You can shift this up using alt arrow keys. Now this is not going to be displaying all of our different pixels. We need to set this to our memo parentheses or square brackets. Run that and we're setting this as a u size. So this is going to import into all of our different information. And then at the end here, we're going to do pixel of i 
is equal to memo of the picks pi. And then we need to set this as a new size. So this should double the speed, so instead of having to calculate a power function for every single one of our pixels three times over, we only have to calculate this at worst case scenario 255 times, or 256 times. So that just saves us from doing a power function. It's faster to call from array than it is to do power, especially at different degrees. And we can do the same thing for the log transformation. So if we go into here, under our constant, we can let immutable memo of our u8 that is 256 long, and we're going to set it to equal 0, colon, 256, and then you can highlight this all, square brackets, that's another trick in VS Code, is if you highlight anything and hit any of the delimiters, it will surround them. So now we have our memo, we need to do our if statement in here, so if it is in our memo, so if picks of i as a u size, is equal to zero, open up the parentheses, shift this up, and then our pixel of i is equal to our memo of pix of i as a u size, and then we'll set our memo picks of i as u size. So I can spell that right. So now this should double our speed efficiency on these programs, which it doesn't quite matter on small images like this, but on large images of 8K images, it could take up to 30 seconds to try to link through every single one of the different pixels three times. So this just makes it so we only have to do log, at worst case, 255 times. Log's a fairly expensive function. Same with power. This brings us to the end of the video where I self-promote. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. I'm now at like 98% subscribed instead of like 99.9, .9, so thank you guys. And then thanks for the comments, I read through them all. And then any corrections that need to be made is in my dynamic programming video, I said memorization instead of memo wise or memo ization there there's a distinction so thank you for correcting me um yep check out my github like i don't know bye